Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a nice example of pancreatic intraductal papillary mucinous, mucinous neoplasm with multifocal colloid carcinoma. So this is a case of a 62-year-old female patient who was complaining of abdominal pain and was found to have pancreatic head a tumor. And as you can see here from the scanning power magnification, the main pancreatic duct is dilated and this is extremely important in rendering the proper diagnosis so the first step comes from a grossing and low power magnification scanning magnification where we have the dilated main pancreatic duct where the diameter is usually one centimeter or more in this case it was borderline it was 0.9 centimeter and then as you can see here the growth is really embedded here and then continuing until the ampulla of water but I'm going actually to be zooming in at multiple foci here at the normal pancreas the main pancreatic duct to discuss the lining epithelium then the embedding here uh, of uh, of the growth and then uh, what happened at the ampulla of water then one of the branching duct we're going to zoom into and then one of the foci of the colloid carcinoma so first of all, the normal pancreatic uh, tissue is unremarkable and uh, ruling out the presence of a chronic pancreatitis in the background. An important supporting clue to the diagnosis against the differential diagnosis of pancreatic adenocarcinoma. And then this is one of the foci that we zoomed in from the main pancreatic duct. And uh, as you can see, there is this filiform or villus proliferation of the epithelium that is lined by intestinal type epithelium showing high grade dysplasia. If you see this appearance, that would remind you of villus adenoma of the intestine with high grade dysplasia. Remember that you're talking about probably the um, pancreatic intraductal mucinous neoplasm rather than pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, which is the main differential diagnosis because in pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia, you will not see this finger-like projection growing into the lumen. And this is another focus from the main uh, pancreatic duct where we have this villus uh, proliferation that is lined by high-grade dysplasia showing even here some oncocytic changes in the cytoplasm, again, another important clue to the diagnosis. And I bet you, if you see this appearance or this biopsy, and I tell you this is coming from the colon, you will call this like villus adenoma with high-grade dysplasia, but this is the pancreas. So remember what really looks like the uh, villus adenoma with high-grade dysplasia of the colon, but it present in the pancreas is the pancreatic intraductal mucinous uh, neoplasm. And this is number three, this is one of the main invaginations from the main pancreatic duct showing again the exact same morphology with the villus transformation of the surface and the high grade dysplasia. This is from the ampulla of water and in this half you can see the same appearance of the a villus adenoma-like appearance uh, uh, with the high-grade dysplasia growing, creeping along the uh, surface epithelium, and suddenly we start to see the normal duodenal epithelium. Really a very nice depiction of the way these tumors sometimes grow along the epithelium. And this is number five, where we have one of the branching ducts, half of which is lined by normal uh, epithelium ductal epithelium and the second half showing again the same appearance, the villiform transformation of the surface along with high grade dysplasia lining the, uh, uh, the in the epithelial uh, lining and this is on high power man magnification contrasting the normal lining as well as the high grade dysplasia that is growing into the lumen in this instance. And then one of the foci of the colloid carcinoma in which we have the growth of uh, small glands with marked atypia growing in this uh, very prominent uh, desmoplastic stroma and another focus showing this 
separate focus from the previous one showing almost the same appearance. But here we start to see more of a nuisance in the background and then those small, highly atypical glands and even more mucin now is present in the background in support of colloid carcinoma and containing those highly atypical small glandular uh, proliferation. What was really nice was P53 immunostain, which showed, so this is one of the branching ducts, the strong uh, diffuse positivity consistent with abnormal expression of P53 in contrast to the normally appearing uh, uh, epithelium. And then this is again one of the branching ducts in which we have the line, the villiform uh, transformation of the uh, surface, the highly uh, uh, um, strongly positive P53 is staining in most of the tumor cells. And then we start to see here the small uh, glands that are forming the components of the colloid carcinoma, staining positive with P53, meaning that they are clonal proliferation originating from the main dysplastic duct. So the final diagnosis in this case is a pancreatic intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm. It's extremely important to render this diagnosis, especially against the differential diagnosis of pancreatic intraepithelial neoplasia. One important clue is that the lining epithelium of the intraductal papillary mucinous neoplasm is usually in intestinal type or oncocytic type. There might be also gastric type, but remember, if you have the intestinal type epithelium, as in this case, this would be strongly supportive of the diagnosis. The high-grade dysplasia was very clear, both cytologically, uh, um, architecturally, as well as with the support of the P53 immunohistochemistry. And then I showed you multiple foci of invasive colloid carcinoma that sometimes can arise in association with this uh, peculiar uh, neoplasm. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.